so that pretty much covers everything with Diotas is regular equivalent. So Iris image coming from the IOM also 700. You know, I don't know <laughs> Yeah, it's an effort of great doctors like you. Thank you very much for Thank this. you so much for the interview. I am really fascinated about your new upgrades coming up. Hyperopy correction right. in the OK line. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so we just got the CE mark on oh, really? Hyperopy. Yeah. You can treat now up to plus seven diopters, spherical oh, really? equivalent. Really? So that pretty much covers everything you can do on laser vision correction uh -huh. with Hyperopia. Yeah. yeah, that comes in a package now because the software package was approved, so it comes now in a package with outer oculine, a cyclotorsion adjustment based on an iris image coming from the IOM Master 700. You know, so that further improves accuracy, workflow and of course the range of patients you can treat. So the, it's going to be uh, launched on the Euro first and then yes. go to the Asia. Right. Hey, it's a major upgrade. Yeah. Yes, we are waiting for it so long and now yeah, finally we finally got it. We got the <laughs> so what is your, your opinion about Hyperopia in Asia? I think it's not so big volume of patients to be really important. Really. Nowadays, the, a mild hyperopic patient or a hyperopic plus a press biopic patient, mm. they're having trouble reading and near things. Yes. So, but we, we don't have much options because uh, we cannot do the uh, intraocular lens implantation because their ACD is too shallow. Yes. Uh, so we have to do the cornea surgery or the clear, clear lens extraction. Right. But since they're in the mid 40s, uh, they don't have the cataract. Right, so right, right, right. I'm against doing the CLE yes. too soon. Yes. So I'd rather take the cornea surgery, but we had to do the Lasik flap surgery for yes, the hyperopic yes. correction. If you have the option to do the smile, because the patient yes. wants to do the smile because it's safer. So if we have the hyperopic option, then it's yes. going to be a good weapon for us. Okay, super. Good to hear that. Very uh, wide range to cover. Plus up to seven diopters, you said? Yes, oh. seven diopters uh, is very good equivalent. So it depends on the, you know, how much cylinder and whatever, and, uh, and the optical yeah. zone a little bit. But that's the maximum we can go. Very impressive. I've done the wet lab uh, just okay. before and. It looks really good, the smooth... Uh... Yes, it's a little bit more challenging because the eyes are typically smaller. So you have a smaller white to white, but you need a larger right. lentil. So there's a learning curve, I guess, for the, for the first cases, but uh, manageable. I found that the incision and the transition zone is a, a, a bit narrower than the myopic correction, but right. still the experienced surgeon can also handle it. And right. the periphery is a little bit thicker, so when we go to the down, uh, uh, lower part, uh, we should be careful a little bit to not to... Not to, uh, not to go through the center and then right. penetrate. Uh, yeah. right. But uh, just one more question. Is that can we only do the hyperopic correction with the VC800 or can yes. we do... Oh, really, yeah. Yes. Is there a specific reason for it? I think it's a very good idea because you have larger lenticles, you have larger caps, and so it takes longer. Yes, sir. So if you would do hyperopes uh, on the on the old oh, okay, Visomax, yeah. it would take very long. So it would be like 30 seconds or something like that. Plus, you're docking because of the smaller eyes. Yes. It's more difficult. So all these things together, it's, it's much better to have a quicker treatment uh, to, to reduce your suction loss risk. Yeah. It's lucky that I have a VJ turn. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you. Great talk to you. Thank you. Take care.